In a decomposition reaction, it's actually the opposite of a synthesis reaction. In a synthesis reaction, you can think of it as a uh, coming together, getting married, uh, becoming more complex. Decomposition is you take something that's already complex and it breaks apart, it decays, it splits up. It's like a divorce. It's like uh, decomposition. Think about like out in the woods, your you know logs and leaves are out rotting. They're decomposing. That's what's happening. They're breaking up into simpler compounds. And so you always have you always. Uh, real easy to identify a decomposition reaction because you have a compound and then an arrow. There's no pluses, there's nothing else, there's just one thing, it's a compound. You have an arrow, breaks up into other things. Now those other things could be elements, they could be a compound and an element, it could both be compounds, but they're going to be simpler things than this. <clears throat> Our classic example of a decomposition reaction, there are others, but one that I like to do is the hydrogen peroxide decomposition you're probably familiar with. Hydrogen peroxide is the is this stuff. Whenever you, uh, sometimes you, if you cut yourself, you put it on there and it'll bubble up. Well, what's bubbling is actually, you're actually making oxygen bubbles. There's something in your blood that makes it do that. And um, this can be a little confusing because actually this reaction has, a, uh, it's a catalyzed reaction, which means that it'll kind of happen on its own if there's something there to make it go. So there's another thing necessary. You have to have something in here that's going to make it go. In our case, we're going to use uh, manganese dioxide, black powder, to make it go. And so it's not really part of the reaction. It's called a catalyst. And so it's not actually going to get used up in the reaction. All the manganese dioxide I put in at the beginning will still be there at the end. Uh, not all decomposition reactions use catalysts, um, but this one, this one it does. So <clears throat> here I have already put some of the manganese dioxide, the black powder, I've already put it inside of this test tube here. And so I'm going to take my hydrogen peroxide and I'm going to put a little bit in and you should immediately begin to see some, uh, some oxygen being generated. And what, the way you'll see it is you'll see little bubbles. And there you go, we can sort of see the, let's pull more in there. Get it up above the clamp, didn't plan that out very well. The clamp's in the way, fill it up, fill it up, there we go. See those bubbles coming up there? That gas you're being generated is oxygen. And I can prove it to you because there's a test that we can do for oxygen. If you take a wood splint and you blow it out, but it's still glowing, we can actually use oxygen to relight it because things burn really well in the presence of oxygen. It's kind of like it's kind of like stoking the flame in your fireplace. Now it won't work now because I've lost my little glow there. It's the embers out. But as long as we have it glowing, we can get the thing to relight with oxygen. Similarly, the test for carbon dioxide is you uh, you stick something like this in here and watch it go out. That's the oxygen test. So you can see that we're definitely making oxygen in there. And so we're also making water. There's water being made in there as well. So that's all good and fine. That is the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide <coughs> catalyzed by manganese dioxide, which um, we've already seen. But let's see it in a slightly different way. This bottle is hydrogen peroxide at a concentration of 3%. What I have in here is also hydrogen peroxide, but it did not come out of this bottle. It came out of this bottle, which is 30%. So this is 10 times as concentrated as that is. Well, <clears throat> why isn't it bubbling up, you might ask. Well, it's not bubbling up because I haven't put any manganese dioxide in it. So, let's see what happens if we put manganese dioxide in it. Just a little bit. Just a tiny little bit. And we're making oxygen. What you're seeing is actually water vapor. You're seeing the steam. It's the genie in a bottle experiment demonstration. Nice 
and moist in here now. Getting my oxygen in. Whew. Now, uh, this one wasn't as messy as it often is. I did this one just about right. And that's going to go for a little while because I use quite a bit of hydrogen peroxide. That black stuff in there, though, sometimes that black stuff in there kind of sprays out with the steam, and that is actually... People always ask me what I burned up there. That's not burned. That's, whoa, that's this black stuff that has gotten sprayed up there while I was doing this particular demonstration. And we're done. Also notice the heat of the the heat of the reaction that's really hot right now. The heat of the reaction actually shrunk the bottle. Um, it's not as noticeable here because I actually did this one as a demonstration a second ago uh, with a much smaller amount and it shrunk a little bit. So these are both a little smaller. This one's already a little smaller than what it should be and this one's clearly smaller than that. And so there you go, decomposition of hydrogen peroxide.